Hi, I'm Shashank Bhargav and you're listening to Three Things, the Indian Express news show. In this episode, we talk about an RSS-affiliated magazine targeting the e-commerce giant Amazon and accusing it of funding forced religious conversions in India. We also talk about the power tussle within the Rajasthan Congress and the resignation of All India Congress Committee's Rajasthan in charge, Ajay Makan. But first, we talk about pensions that central government employees receive. Back in 2004, the new pension scheme was introduced for the new recruits joining the central government. The old scheme had been costing both the government and taxpayers a lot of money. And so it was decided that an alternative was required. But now it turns out that some political parties are deciding to revert to the old scheme after facing pressure from the central government employees. Earlier this year, the Congress reverted to the old scheme in both Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, and now the Ahmadmi Party is promising to do this in Punjab. Punjab government has decided that the Diwali is the way to Punjab. We are old pension scheme लागू कर रहे हैं एदा सिद्धांतिक तौर पे आज कैबिनेट दे विच फैसला हो गया बाकी जेड़े बेर बेर इन दिस सेगमेंट इंडियन एक्सप्रेसस एग्जीक्यूटिव एडिटर फॉर नेशनल अफेयर्स पी वेदनाथन अय्यर जॉइंस अस टू टॉक अबाउट व्हाई गोइंग बैक टू द ओल्ड स्कीम इज अ बैड मूव बोथ इकोनॉमिकली एंड पॉलिटिकली वेदी कुड यू बिगिन बाय एक्सप्लेनिंग एग्जैक्टली हाउ द ओल्ड पेंशन सिस्टम वर्क्स the old pension system is a very classical way in which you know most socialist governments across the world worked basically on in the last few months of your service uh, just before you turn 60 or you retire they used to fix 50% of the basic salary that the government employee drew and that was fixed as the pension for the future so let's say my basic pay is 20000 then my pension would be 10000 Absolutely. So that was the basic uh, idea of uh, pension. Every year they used to also have some kind of indexation which was an adjustment made to their pensions. In government service for employees who are already working, it used to be declared twice a year in January and in July. And to make adjustments or take care of the inflation or the rising living costs. Basically, you would get a bit more money to adjust to the steady increase in the cost of living. Yes, so very clearly, you know, they called it also dearness allowance because things get dearer and you are getting an allowance for that. So for employees, it was called dearness allowance and for pensioners, it was called dearness relief because for them it was a relief. And based on this old system, how much would the government end up spending on pensions? So if you look at, you know, say 2020-21 figures, the state government paid something like 3 lakh 86,000 crores and the central government paid like 2 lakh 8,000 crores. So effectively, they paid almost like 6 lakh crores, which is like a huge sum. Yeah. And so what kind of a burden would it put on the central and state coffers? More than the burden on the central and state coffers, it is how it pinches taxpayers. Because there are a set number of taxpayers who are paying taxes today. So you and I pay taxes today, but we pay for a generation which has already retired. So there is an intergenerational equity or an intergenerational transfer issue where the current generation of taxpayers pays for an older generation which has passed out. And this burden, the current generation doesn't even know how it is increasing. Say in 30 years, this burden for states has increased from 3,000 crore to 3,86,000 crore in just 30 years. And for central government, it has increased from 3,000 crore to 2,8,000 crore. So that's like a huge jump. And all the current taxpayers are kind of have been footing this bill for long. So people right now are effectively paying for the pensions of people who have retired years ago. Yes, yes. So nothing against them. The people who retire, you know, they, because of better health facilities, life expectancy have increased, you know, they live for long and they need to be taken care of. All that is fine. But the government footing the bill, which is continuously increasing, and the government employees are just about 5% of the total Indian workforce. So you are spending lakhs of crores on 5% of the workforce. What about the rest of the 95%? That is the bigger question, which doesn't get any political salience. Right, and because of these reasons, because of these concerns, the new pension scheme was proposed. 
and this was based on the old age social and income security project also called the oasis project so how did this new system work so you know essentially the old system was an assured payment system it was a defined benefit system that benefit was defined and it was assured the new pension scheme on which the government was working for a couple of years in the early 2000s it talked about a defined contribution where the contribution is defined what the employee pays the government of india employee or the state government employee pays towards pension is defined but the benefit is not defined so he is not assured by the government of india through a stamp or a guarantee that 50% of your last drawn salary will be your pension that is not guaranteed that is not assured so the new pension scheme said that every month the government will set aside 10% of your salary the employee will set aside 10% of the salary every employee who joins government service from january 1 2004 will open a retirement account all this money goes there it gets pooled in and can be invested in pension funds which were floated by more than half a dozen companies so mm-hmm. essentially that was the scheme and these pension funds had been given guidelines on how and where they can invest just like a mutual fund works they could invest in government bonds they could invest in corporate sector bonds and they could always also invest in equities so in this new pension scheme the benefits are essentially coming from these funds absolutely these are market returns these are not defined by the government of india these are defined by the market and that is the best way to go forward because you know and one should not forget the power of compounding of market returns you know markets have grown phenomenally over a period of time if you look at the sensex way back in 2000 early 2000 it was about 6000 now it is over 60000 so in just less than 20 years the sensex has risen you know what 10 times so between 2004 and 2022 itself the sensex has risen substantially for people to get decent returns and if you look at the pension funds the eight or nine pension fund companies which are there the average return is about 9.2% which is a very good return over a 10 year period okay so it seems that this new system is clearly taking care of the problems that were there in the old system there isn't that much pressure on the government or taxpayers to foot the rising pension bills so why is it that the central government employees are demanding that they would prefer the old system and why are political parties giving into that so one primary reason is this government employee population in india is a vocal population you know it has got the noise or the voice that it has is disproportionate to its size and in some states like a himachal pradesh government employees are large numbers government retired employees retired defense employees in himachal in uttarakhand they are large numbers so for government it becomes a huge constituency like you know every government employee also supports you know five other people and they are reasonably well off they are middle class and they have as i said a voice which is louder and drowns all the voices of the unorganized sector for whom the political class doesn't really care too much so when they make noise and they are being reported about in the press and the media then the government gets worried that you know if this is the narrative people are not being taken care of then so they succumb to such pressures that's why probably governments like you know the congress party and the aam aadmi party in two states congress has actually reverted in rajasthan and chatisgarh as we know and in punjab the aam aadmi party has said that it is going to revert but is silent because it doesn't know where it will get the money from so that's a problem with aam aadmi party faces today but congress has said that it will do it in gujarat it will do it in himachal if it wants day one of the cabinet you know those kind of very weird promises completely ignoring the unorganized sector workers you know that is a bigger issue yeah and you have written that this move is economically bad and politically not very sound is it essentially short sightedness it is completely short sightedness and it is very very how somebody put it to me opportunistically non reformist so you are being very opportunist because you know you are catering to this small section of the working population which makes a lot of noise disproportionate to its size you are catering to them and you are being completely non reformist so at a time when the government decided that they will move to a new pension scheme which is 
defined contribution but not defined benefits we were going through a demographic transition we had large number of youth that was probably the best time to do these reforms because these youth when they join the government they will not saddle the future generations with pensions of 50% of their last earned salaries which would be phenomenally high so we had the sweet spot we made use of the sweet spot and now we are doing such damage to that and could you tell us how much funds has this new pension scheme gathered so far and how many people have subscribed to it so you know if you look at you know since 2004 when the new pension system had started the funds about you know nine of them together have assets under management of almost 8 lakh crores which is a huge sum in just about you know what 16 years 17 years and even the number of subscribers you know the central government has large number of subscribers which is about roughly 25 lakhs the states have much more because you know states are you know in fact they will be the biggest beneficiaries once they move to this uh, new pension scheme they have over 50 lakh subscribers but the most unfortunate part is the unorganized sector workers who do not have any social security post retirement today they are just about 25 lakhs and they constitute 90% of the total workforce so clearly shows where the government's priorities are the government's priorities are to pamper its own employees who have had a decent enough life who have been taken care of and neglect a large population of workers for whom there has been no investment avenue for too long a period of time for their old age income securities and next we talk about the organizer which is a magazine linked to the rss the ideological parent of the bjp in its latest issue The magazine has published a cover story where it has accused the e-commerce giant Amazon of funding religious conversions in the country's northeast. In this segment we speak to Indian Express's Deepti Mantiwari about this report and the significance of the magazine targeting the company. Deepti man what exactly are the claims that this story is making the one published in the organizer? the organizer has uh, which is an rss affiliated magazine has carried a cover story on religious conversion although the cover story is about some german nationals being arrested in assam for alleged religious conversion and some other such activities in the northeast and there are two three paragraphs there is a section on how amazon is actually financing religious conversion activities of a certain mission you know a church American Baptist Church which has allegedly a front called All India Mission which is active in the northeast and is actually converting people from Hinduism to Christianity it has gone on to claim that uh, as many as 25000 people have been converted by this mission in the past few years and uh, it is said that through Amazon's platform Amazon Smile which is actually a platform which uh, allows donations through purchases so every article you purchase through amazon if it goes through the amazon smile part of that goes to as donation to certain organization or you know that's how the platform works so they have said that this is how they are actually financing their activities interestingly this is only a small part of the larger story that they have done on religious conversion but the cover of the magazine is actually amazon instead of religious conversion in northeast or some german nationals having been arrested in assam so it's interesting because a small part of the larger story has made it to the cover and the amazon logo has been perpendicularly cut by a red straight line to make it look like a cross and the headline reads cross connection basically suggesting that religious conversion by churches and everything and uh, the last two letters of amazon have been cut and superimposed with ing so it becomes amazing cross connection so that's how the entire story has been portrayed by the organizer so you got in touch with amazon regarding this what did they have to say about it well amazon has denied all the allegations it has said that we have absolutely no connection with all india mission and uh, the amazon smile platform is actually not even operational in india and wherever it is operational outside it is actually a neutral platform and has got nothing to do with what organization a certain donation goes to the amazon has no role to play in it it's just a platform anyone can donate to anyone through that platform 
So they are saying that we have absolutely no role to play in this, and we are absolutely law abiding, and there is nothing that we are doing for conversion or whatever. Interestingly, in September, the organizer had carried a small report, a similar report about uh, such kind of illegal conversion and uh, Amazon's involvement in it. And based on that report, the NCPCR, which is the Child Protection Rights Government Body, because it was suggested that this All India Mission also runs some orphanages, so the NCPCR sent a notice to Amazon, summoned their executives for questioning, and uh, has claimed that it is now investigating the entire matter of conversion by this All India Mission and its connections with uh, Amazon. So that's how things have moved in this entire thing. And Deepthi Man, could you talk about the significance of an RSS affiliated magazine like the Organizer doing such a story and, in a sense, targeting Amazon? First of all, the timing is important. The cover story comes on a day that uh, a BJP lawyer files a petition in the Supreme Court on illegal religious conversion in the country, and the Supreme Court passes some uh, significant observations while issuing notices to the center. So, first, the timing is important that it comes on the same day that Supreme Court passes certain observations which are critical of uh, religious conversion in the country. Yeah, basically, the Supreme Court said that forced religious conversions are very dangerous and they may affect the security of the nation and freedom of religion and conscience. But coming back to the RSS, I mean, this is not the first time that RSS has attacked e-commerce companies. So talk about the previous instances and the possible reason why it has done so. So while we're talking about Amazon earlier, we have seen such attacks on Flipkart as well. And uh, they have come not only from Organizer and Panchajanya, which is the Hindi version of the Organizer magazine, but also from Swadeshi Jagran Manch, which is the economic wing of RSS and uh, professors made in India and India-centric manufacturing and trade. So earlier, Panchajanya has carried article on Amazon alleging it of corrupt practices and saying that it is hurting Hindu sentiments through certain shows such as Tandav and all on Prime Videos. It has also claimed that, uh, in fact, it has likened Amazon to East India Company in its article, which was published uh, last year. In the same year, in December, Swadeshi Jagran Manch uh, passed a resolution in one of its meetings condemning Amazon's practices and demanding investigations into its affairs by the government and uh, said that it was killing small traders in the country. So there is a two front attack. One is ideological and cultural and the second is economic. And we have to understand that the Sangh Parivar and the BJP have their traditional base among small traders. So it is just as much economic as it is political. We all know there have been allegations against Flipkart and Amazon of cartelization and there have been investigations to that effect. And that while Amazon has been claiming that it is helping India's small traders reach a larger platform or larger number of customers, there have been allegations that through its own you know, retail agencies such as Cloudtail and Apario, Amazon has actually cartelized the entire market and the small traders are actually losing out and not really benefiting from Amazon as much as it claims. So it's as much economic as it is political. And the RSS has been focusing on economic issues a lot more, right? For example, even in its last annual report, it focused a lot more on economic concerns rather than cultural ones. See, we have to understand that uh, this is not a recent thing. This RSS vision of the economy has been about these small traders, India-centric business. Once upon a time, they were extremely opposed to FDI and everything in retail. So we have to understand that the RSS vision is about these small traders. And these small traders, and traditionally BJP and RSS have been called, uh, you know, Banya parties. Because the trading community, the business community has been the biggest support base for RSS and BJP. And so it is only natural that any organization that draws both its support base and funds from a certain community, that's for their interests. All parties do that. So it's a concern that RSS or the BJP have not been articulating now, but have been articulating for a long time. In fact, ever since they've been there. So they have been articulating their interests, uh, their concerns 
So it is part of that. Along with that, of course, illegal conversion is one of the pet ideological issues of the RSS. And so these two things combine to put some pressure on these e-commerce giants to which perhaps the organization needs to mend their ways. And next we talk about Rajasthan. For some time now, there has been a tussle going on within the Congress party in the state. The tussle is between the Chief Minister Ashok Gehloth, who represents the old guard, and senior leader Sachin Pilot, who represents the relatively younger generation of Congress leaders. And what has been clear is that Pilot has wanted to become the Chief Minister for a while now. In fact, in the past, Pilot has openly rebelled against the party in order to get the central leadership to listen to him. And later, he was made to believe that he will be given that position soon. But that has not happened yet. And the tussle has continued. Now on Wednesday, Ajay Makan, who is part of the Sachin Pilot camp, he resigned as the All India Congress Committee's Rajasthan in charge, which was a manifestation of this ongoing problem. When we spoke to Indian Express's Manoj CG, who covers Congress for the paper, he told us that it all started when earlier this year, the Congress leadership decided that it wanted Gehlot to leave the CM post and become the Congress president instead. Sonia Gandhi and Ashok Gehlot had a meeting in the middle of September where the issue was broached and it was signaled to Gehlot that he will have to leave the post of chief minister. Remember, the Congress had at its Udaipur Chintan Shivir in May agreed on a a raft of organizational reforms. The most important among them was this one person, one post principle, which the party wanted to enforce. So it was kind of signaled to Mr. Gallaud that he will have to leave the post of chief minister. Now, there were differing perceptions then also. So uh, Mr. Gallaud perhaps understood that he will get some more time after his election as Congress president maybe till February of 2023, when he will be given a chance to present the budget. So that talk, it was not clinched in one way or the other. The days progressed and Mr. Gallaud finally announced his decision to contest for the post of Congress president. In between, Mr. Rahul Gandhi, who is leading the Bharat Jodo Yatra in Kochi, when he was addressing a press conference, he was asked about this question. And he made it very clear that you know the party had agreed on this one person, one post principle. And he believes, he agrees, he feels that that principle should be followed. Jo, what we have decided, jo humne Udaipur mein decide kiya, uh, wo Congress party ka ek commitment hai. So I expect that commitment will be maintained. And this was perceived as a bit of an embarrassing moment for Gehloth, right? that instead of talking to him, Rahul Gandhi was speaking to the media. Yes, yes. Because the day Rahul Gandhi said that, by evening of that day, Mr. Gehlot was on his way to Kochi to meet him and join the Yatra. So there was this view in the party then that Rahul could have, you know, told him privately about this, why he had to say all this in a press conference and send a signal to Gehlot that, you know, they are kind of forcing him out. Even before he takes over as the Congress president, the chief minister was kind of snubbed. That was the perception that went out. So nevertheless, all that happened. And Mr. Gallot kind of agreed to the idea that he will have to step down. But even then, he believed that he will be given time till actually the elections are over for him to become the Congress president. And then he will step down. Yeah, and one of the reasons he wanted to do that was because he wanted to have a say in who becomes the next chief minister of Rajasthan. And the perception was that he did not want Sachin Pilot to take his place. And meanwhile, the central leadership thought that if they make Gehloth, a non-Gandhi, as the Congress president, and Pilot the chief minister, which is something that he has wanted for some time, they would be killing two birds with one stone. Yeah, that was the idea perhaps the leadership had that, you know, you can resolve this leadership tussle in Rajasthan by elevating uh, Mr. Gallot as the Congress president and making Sachin the chief minister. So that will be resolved. And at the same time, a non-Gandhi comes in as a Congress president that will address the frequent attack on the Congress and the Gandhi family on this dynasty thing by the BJP. So it was thought of as an idea which could resolve two issues at the same time. 
so the chief minister perhaps wanted a loyalist of his to become the chief minister his successor and the decision should be kept pending till the election of the congress president but the high command had different ideas they decided to call a meeting of the congress legislature party mr mallikarjun khadge who is now the congress president and ajay makan who was the in charge of rajasthan they were sent to jaipur to attend the clp meeting so through the day there were meetings between the observers and those who were talking to the high command on behalf of galot so mr shanti dariwal one of the ministers and many others they told mr makan and mr khadge that they were ready to pass a one line resolution authorizing the congress president to take a decision on the clp leader which means the, the chief minister but that should be activated operationalized after the congress president elections in the middle of october so this precondition was not acceptable to the icc observers the main reason being if galot contest and becomes the congress president then it will be this resolution which is passed by the clp will be authorizing galot only because he will become the congress president so they said no this is not possible because a decision on gehlot successor will be operationalized by gehlot only when he become the congress president so that is not possible no such conditions can be attached to this one line resolution which the high command wanted to be passed and then we all remember how events that unfolded yes around 90 mlas they didn't attend the clp meeting had a parallel meeting instead and they even went to the speaker and symbolically handed their resignations to him and this was a major embarrassment for congress what happened after that after that four days after that on september 29th the clp meeting which did not happen was to happen on september 25th on september 29th gelot came to delhi met sonia gandhi apologized for what had happened and announced that he is not contesting for the post of congress president of course his position had become very untenable by then so this is what had happened now the differing perceptions begin from here from gehlot's point of view the need for changing the chief minister arose because he was becoming the congress president now that he has not become the congress president there is no need for changing the chief minister so that is a perception which the gehlot camp has the other camp sachin pilot camp has a differing perception they believe that there was an assurance and on top of that there was a clp meeting which the high command wanted to convene which did not happen so the issue is yet unresolved for a section of the high command also that is a perception where some leaders believe including mr markan believe a decision has to be taken either which way because after mr galot and mr pilot both met sonia gandhi on september 29th the icc general secretary in charge of organization kc venukopal had come out and said a decision on rajasthan will be announced in a day or two so what was that decision that decision has to be announced either allow mr galot to continue or and for the leadership change either which way that decision has to be announced you cannot let this uncertainty continue so that is a perception of a section of the high command leaders another section believe mr galot has the complete backing of the mlas which was proven on that day so why disturb him and why you know unnecessarily enforce a leadership change and create more trouble and confusion so let him continue till the elections which is just an year away Right and this is the crux of the problem and Markan's resignation has once again shined a spotlight on this issue but do we see Markan resigning mainly because he is part of the Sachin Pilot camp or does he have his own reasons from Markan's point of view there are a couple of other reasons also because after that you know September 25 events the party had issued shockers notices to three leaders one Mr Shanti Dariwal and Mahesh Joshi and Mr Rathore who is the RTDC chairman so from a Markan's point of view all these people will play a role when the Bharat Jodo yatra enters Rajasthan so all these people against whom shockers notices have been issued by him at his behest because it was on the base of the report by Mr Markan there is no action against them and Mr Markan as the in charge will have to go to Rajasthan when the yatra enters there and work with the same set of people so he basically argues that what is the moral authority of the general secretary in charge then i had suggested that there was grave indiscipline shockers notices were issued and there was no action and i will then working walking with the same set of people so for him was not a happy proposition so that is his point of view but yes at the root of the issue is this leadership puzzle which has to be resolved either which way in either sachin pilot's favor or in mr gehlot's favor you are listening to three things by the indian express 
Today's show was written and produced by me, Shashank Bhargav, and was edited and mixed by Suresh Pawar. If you like the show, then do subscribe to us wherever you get your podcasts. You can also recommend the show to someone you think will like it. Share it with a friend or someone in your family. It's the best way for people to get to know about us. You can tweet us at Express Podcasts and write to us at podcasts at IndianExpress.com.